Now, one thing you're noticing here, uh, if you're looking closely, is that the entire front assembly of the forklift and the little light are still remaining static. They're not going anywhere. They're not moving within the simulation. That's because I haven't specified any parts to be able to attach to those graphical elements. So as we build up more of the forklift, then we would have all these elements moving within the simulation. Now, while we have more control over the actual functionality of the machine at this time, we can also see that the machine was going nowhere fast. Now, that's because right now my joystick generates values that have a very small range between minus 1 and plus 1, whereas the actuators are now, uh, for the constraints, are receiving these minus 1 and plus 1, and that's only uh, generating a very small range of motion for these motors. If I want to get larger ranges of motion, uh, what I need to do is to put in place a an element that's going to be able to do some mathematical computation on this data to be able to scale it to have more interesting values. The mechanism we have built into Vortex to do this is what are called scripts. And so there we have integrated the Python language within the Vortex tool to be able to write logic that can either scale data, do some mathematical operations, it can also do some basic control logic like doing if statements to decide how it should treat data or to react to different inputs from the user. So to add a Python script here inside of the uh, mechanism that I'm building, what I'll do is I'll go to the simulation section of the editor and I'm going to double click on script. Within the script editor, or the script pop-up that shows up, I should say, what I'll be able to specify is what are going to be the names of the inputs, outputs, and parameters. So as we just saw before, inputs are going to be any kind of data that goes into the script, and these are uh, values that can change at runtime as the simulation is running. Then we'll have outputs. These will be generated from the script, and so these will constantly be updated as the simulation is running and will be data that comes out of the script that can be sent elsewhere within the system that we're simulating. Finally we're going to have parameters at the bottom and so parameters are a place where we can put values that will go into the script but they're going to remain fixed during the execution. Parameters in terms of a script can really be used to do things like have scaling factors. Now instead of hard coding those inside of the code you could have a parameter that would be a value that you could change within the editor and then that would alter the output of the script but that won't be something that would change as you're running the actual simulation. So in this case what I'll do is I'm going to create a few different um, inputs and outputs namely under the input section I'm going to be creating an input called uh, steering and once we have given it a name we can give it a type now there are a number of different types that are available here things like integers booleans real uh, that you could expect from basic programming and then things that are a bit more involved like vectors 3 and transforms uh, for our case here we're just going to be using basic types and real is actually what we're going to leave here assigned uh, to the steering input we're going to create a second input here that's going to be called throttle and so that will represent the throttle value that we're going to receive from the joystick and again we can leave that to be a real uh, for the data type on the output side we're going to be producing a power signal so that will dictate the power of the engine or how fast the back wheel should be turning and we're also going to be producing a direction signal once again a real once I click OK we'll see that the uh, script uh, property sheet on the right hand side is going to update based on the names that I specified for each of the inputs and for each of the outputs now afterwards we can see that we have no parameters specified that's by design and then we have the actual script section now a script can be entered in one of two ways within vortex it can be typed directly here inside of the code section and you can see here that we have syntax highlighting and line numbering that's available here inside the editor 
or you can actually specify a script file. In that case, you're going to be pointing to a text-based file that's going to be anywhere on your disk, and so that file will contain the actual script code that's going to be executed as part of the simulation. The benefit of using a script file is that you can actually reuse one script file in different mechanisms or in different parts of a simulation. Whereas whatever I write here belongs in this specific script to this specific mechanism. Uh, if you do run or reuse something in multiple places, uh, it is definitely beneficial to use script files. Here I'm going to make something very small and written for this machine, so I'm going to put it directly here inside of the code window. Now, if we look at that script itself, we'll see that the very first line will say from VXM import star, so import everything. And that's going to import Vortex specific syntax and functions to be able to be used here inside of our script. Now, as I mentioned, we are using Python here for the scripting engine. And so one of the main benefits of the Python language is that it does not need to be compiled. So any code that we write here inside of the tool is going to then be interpreted as we run the simulation without need to go inside of any external tools. Now when we create a script it's going to uh, put in some default syntax and a number of different methods inside of the script. Below the section where we import we'll see that we have methods that are called on add to universe, on remove from universe, pre-step, post-step, on state restore, on state save. So these different methods are going to be called at key uh, points during the execution of a simulation inside of Vortex. If we're looking at what we're going, what we want to do here, the main method of interest is going to be the pre-step method where we're going to be going in and analyzing data from the joystick, doing a bit of math on it, sending it back out, before we go and compute the uh, entirety of the simulation. <clears throat> now, while I could just go in and add code directly inside of the pre-step, to make things cleaner, I can actually also delete any of the methods that I'm not using. There won't be any error if those methods are not present, and so that can give me code that's going to be much easier to read by focusing only on the method that I want to write. So I'm going to add a few line feeds in here and then a few spaces to be at the right <clears throat> column. And so afterwards, I can start to write my code. So what I'll do here is under the script, I'm going to want to assign data to the outputs based on data that came in from the inputs and some sort of a scaling factor. So the way that I can assign data to any of the inputs and outputs is by specifying self dot then I can specify inputs or outputs. So if I want to assign data to the output, I would say outputs. Then I would provide the name of the output that I want to assign data to. Now here I have two outputs, power signal and direction signal. The way we'll write their name here is going to be without any spaces, and, or I should say replacing spaces with underscores. So if I want to assign va a value to power signal, I'm going to write here power underscore signal and finally I'm going to write dot value because it's the value element of that output property that we want to assign a value to. On the other side I want to do that based on data that would have come in from the throttle and have a scaling factor. So I'll say here self dot inputs dot throttle dot value and so then I can specify a scaling factor like 5. For the second line self dot outputs dot direction dot value is equal to self dot inputs dot steering dot value multiplied by 10. So this will quite simply take two input values have a multiplier on them, and then send that back out to the power signal and the direction signal. Once I'm done typing code here, I'm always going to be using check syntax. Now this button will do two things. A, it will validate that the syntax that I wrote in here makes sense. 
So for example, if I remove the E from value, uh, not a good example, uh, that does not cause any problems. But if I do introduce a syntax error, then it would appear down here. Uh, the other thing it will do is that it will commit the code that I've written in this cell to the script element. So that kind of saves your work that you've done inside of that box and attaches it inside uh, of the script. Now that I have the script in place, I would like to use it to be able to uh, alter the data that comes from the joystick before it reaches the actual desired velocity for the motors on the wheels and the pivot. So the way that I'll do that is I'm going to remove the connections that I had before. So I can actually click on them to select these connections and sever them by hitting the delete key on the keyboard. Another way uh, of doing that would be to right click and select remove. It does the same thing. So I'll just use the delete key again on my keyboard. Now I want to create a block in the center that's going to be my script that's going to process this data. So I'm going to drag and drop steering into here. And of course, after I do that, I can kind of just move these different boxes around to try to make this clear. Then I can bring in throttle, power signal, and direction as other elements that I want to connect. Once I'm done with this, I can reestablish connections. So I had here the axis Z rote that's going to drive the throttle. Now you can see as I did that drag and drop operation, it actually sorted out these different input fields to try to get a connection line that's as clean as possible. So we're just trying to have some algorithms in place to clean up this uh, mess uh, or potential mess uh, to make sure that you don't end up with having connections that overlap and that are hard to read here within the connection editor. I'm going to do the same thing here with the axis X and I'm going to connect that to steering. On the other side, my power signal is going to drive the motor for the rear wheels, whereas the direction signal is going to drive the desired velocity for the pivot. So you can see, very easy to go in, delete things, introduce something in the center, reconnect elements together, and then be ready to uh, run. So if I go back to the 3D tab here and run, now I'm going to see that if I use this to move forward, I'll be able to go much faster than before. And as well on the steering side, I'm getting much more reactive steering, maybe a little too reactive at the moment, uh, to be able to steer this forklift around.